subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening and welcome to sadesha news line i'm lipakshi khurana here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 28th of February. India's Prime Minister Modi chairs high-level meeting on a Ukraine crisis evacuation of Indians. Pakistan's opposition PPP kickstarts a long march to dislodge PM Imran Khan. And Afghan women drop studies to stave off poverty. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi conducted a high-level meeting with his cabinet ministers and other key officials on Monday amid the ongoing crisis in Ukraine. Four Indian ministers will reportedly travel to the neighboring countries of Ukraine, including Romania, Poland and Hungary, to better coordinate the evacuation of hundreds of stranded Indian nationals as Ukraine's airspace remains shut. Cities across Ukraine remain on high alert on the fifth day of the country's fight against Russia's invasion. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday conducted a high-level meeting with his cabinet ministers and other key officials over the ongoing crisis in Ukraine, mainly focusing on the evacuation of stranded Indian nationals in the war-torn country and those who have taken refuge in its neighbouring countries. Ministers Hardeep Singh Puri, Jyoti Raditya Sindhya, Kiran Rijiju and VK Singh will reportedly travel to the neighbouring countries of Ukraine, including Romania, Poland and Hungary where stranded Indian nationals are crossing the border and from where the Indian embassies are coordinating their airlift while Ukraine airspace remains shut. Earlier in the V hours of Monday, India brought home another batch of stranded citizens consisting a large number of students as part of its Operation Ganga, the government's multi-pronged evacuation plan. Over 900 people have been brought back since Saturday and more flights were scheduled to bring hundreds of others in the coming days. Crossing the border is the biggest battle because there is a lot of crowd there and uh, like uh, some of my friends who came with me are still unable to cross the border because there is a lot of crowd and there is no way out other than fighting and kicking and pushing each other and crossing the border. But after crossing the border, yes, embassy is taking care of everything. Meanwhile, the Indian embassy in Ukraine on Monday advised students to reach railway stations in Kyiv to avail special trains put for evacuations. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky earlier on Sunday said Russia had agreed to talks near the Belarusian border, but sounded cautious. He said he wanted his people to know he was open to try anything to stop the war. And polling for the first phase of Northeastern Manipur State Assembly election began on Monday, where India's ruling BJP-led alliance is hoping for a second term in power in a multi-cornered contest. 38 Assembly constituencies of the state's 60 seats are voting in the first of the two-phase election. Polling for the first phase of India's Northeastern Manipur State Assembly elections began in 38 constituencies spread across five districts including Imphal East, Imphal West, Bishnupur, Churachandpur and Kangpokpi on Monday. A total of 173 candidates including 15 females are in the fray in the first phase. Chief Minister N. Biren Singh contesting from his traditional home seat Hainang constituency is notably seeking the fifth term in Manipur. Speaking to media after casting his vote, Singh expressed confidence that ruling BJP Bharatiya Janata Party will be voted to power in the state. Within this 38 seat, BJP is expecting at least 30 seats in the first phase. And uh, I would like to appeal to the people of the state to vote democratically and elect their candidate. Uh, freely, free, with free and a fair mind. BJP candidate and PWD minister Thongjam Bishwajit Singh cast his vote from Thonju constituency. The BJP formed the government in Manipur in 2017 with the support of the National People's Party, 
Naga People's Front and the Lok Jan Shakti Party. However, this time the BJP decided to go solo and is contesting all 60 seats alone. On the other hand, Congress party has formed an alliance of six political parties and named it Manipur Progressive Secular Alliance, MPSA. Elections for the 60-member Manipur Assembly are taking place in two phases, that is February 28th and March 5th. Voting in 22 constituencies will take place in the second phase. And in news from Pakistan, opposition Pakistan People's Party launched its long-awaited anti-inflation campaign, Awami Long March, on Sunday with party chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari declaring it the start of a war against Prime Minister Imran Khan. Calling for the oust of the government, Bilawal raised a 38-point charter demanding fresh elections. Pakistan People's Party or PPP, one of the main opposition parties in Pakistan, on Sunday began its anti-inflation campaign, Awami Long March from Karachi to Islamabad to force Prime Minister Imran Khan to step down. Shouting slogans of Go Imran Go, led by PPP Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, the party raised a 38-point charter demanding fresh elections as it called for a final push against what it termed unjust policies of the PTI-led fascist regime. I, Pakistan People's Party, ke to, I, is Hakumat ke khilaf, hum chidu kehet karte hai, hum aap se poochte hai, kya aap ka aitamad, agar is Hakumat se uch chuka hai, to waq a gaya hai, ke hum Hakumat ke khilaf, adam aitamad le kar aai, chumuri hatiyar apna hai, aur Imran, the Long March participants would pass through 23 districts and 37 cities in 10 days before reaching the federal capital, Islamabad, on March 8. The multi-party opposition alliance, Pakistan Democratic Movement, has also decided to move a no-trust motion against the government soon over its failure to manage the ongoing economic crisis. And moving on, scores of locals in Pakistan-administered Kashmir recently held a sit protest over the delayed construction of a campus of Punch University in the region, which has been lying incomplete for the past 12 years. Locals blamed their repeated pleas have fallen on deaf ears and the non-serious attitude of government authorities has shattered the dreams of thousands of students desiring to pursue higher education. Reports suggest the construction work has remained disrupted due to paucity of funds. Locals in the illegally occupied region have long accused they have been at the receiving end of the discriminatory policies of Islamabad that has failed to provide even basic facilities to them. हमारे साथ हमारी बहनें भी बैठी हुई हैं माएं भी बैठी हुई हैं इससे बड़ी सितम जरीफी की और क्या बात होगी कि 13 साल पहले शुरू किया मंसूबा अभी तक बन ना सका तो हम आपके सामने कसम में बैठे हुए हैं the United States has welcomed the move by Nepal's parliament to ratify the contentious U.S.-funded Millennium Challenge Corporation Compact, stating that it will continue to support Nepal in its long-term economic prosperity. The move came amid protest, with opponents expressing fear the aid agreement would undermine Nepal's laws and sovereignty. The United States has welcomed the move by Nepal's parliament to ratify the contentious US-funded MCC Millennium Challenge Corporation Compact, stating that relation with Nepal is broader than one agreement and that it will continue to support Nepal in its long-term economic prosperity. Nepal's Finance Minister Jarnardhan Sharma presented the proposal in the parliament along with an interpretive declaration, after which a voice vote was conducted to ratify the contentious grant agreement. The move came a day ahead of the February 28 deadline set by Washington. MCC, a U.S. government aid agency, had agreed in 2017 to provide 500 million U.S. dollars as grant to fund an electricity transmission line and road improvement project. The aid does not need to be repaid and Washington says it comes without conditions. Protests were also witnessed on the streets of capital Kathmandu and police had to resort to tear gas shelling and water cannons to repel the demonstrators, who expressed they were wary of US influence in the region. Critics fear the aid would undermine Nepal's laws and sovereignty, 
as it would not have sufficient oversight over the projects. And on the eve of Mahashivratri festival, a large number of Hindu holy men called sadhus gather at Nepal's famed Pashupatinath temple. More than 7,000 monks and thousands of pilgrims from Nepal and India are expected to visit the temple and many have already arrived. Mahashivratri, known as the night of Hindu god Lord Shiva, is observed with great fervor in Nepal. With Mahashivratri festival on Tuesday, Sadhus or Hindu holy men have already thronged the sacred temple of Pashupatinath in Nepal's capital Kathmandu. Mahashivratri, also known as Night of the Shiva, is dedicated to Hindu god of destruction, Lord Shiva. The courtyard of the Ram Mandir in the premises of Pashupatinath temple, a UNESCO World Heritage Site and pilgrimage destination for Hindu devotees, is brimming with sadhus as they return after the COVID-19 pandemic. The Mahashivratri which falls on 1st March this year will witness an inflow of over a million pilgrims from Nepal as well as India to the temple. It is observed with great fervour in Nepal as well as in India and other Hindu populous countries. <laughs> अमरनाथ में रहता सावन के महीना में और फिर यहां आता अंत केदारनाथ का सिर है तिपस्पतिनाथ वन ऑफ द मेजर फेस्टिवल्स ऑफ नेपाल महाशिवरात्रि इज सेलिब्रेटेड ऑन द 14th डे ऑफ द डार्क फोर्टनाइट ऑफ माघ मंथ एज पर द हिंदू लूनर कैलेंडर इट इज बिलीव दैट ऑन दिस डे द स्टार्स इन नदन हेमिस्फेयर आर एट द मोस्ट ऑप्टिमम पोजीशंस टू हेल्प रेज अ पर्सन स्पिरिचुअल एनर्जी it is celebrated to mark the convergence of Shiva and Shakti. Mahashivratri also celebrates the night when Lord Shiva performed the Tandav, the cosmic dance. And 24-year-old Vahida Bayat was a politics major at a Kabul university and used to fund her studies from a job at a local media network. But all that had changed after the Taliban seized power last August. Have a look. Twenty-four-year-old Wahida Bayat was a politics major at the private Gohar Shah University in Afghan capital, Kabul, and used to fund her studies from her job at a local media network where she earned 12,000 Afghanis, that is 132 US dollars a month. But all that changed after the Taliban seized power in August last year and an economic collapse that ensued dragged millions of Afghans into poverty. Wahida lost her job and her parents lost their income. Then she had to drop out of school. When I was in the time when I was in the school, I was very happy. I was very happy to go to school with my parents. But I couldn't go back to school. Because when I was in the school, I told you that you were not allowed to go to school. And I couldn't go back to school. I told you that if I could, because I was in the second school, to make ants meet for her family of nine, Bayad, the oldest, and her sisters make traditional Afghan clothes from orders collected from shop. Together, they make approximately 8,000 Afghani or 88 US dollars a month. And after paying rent and food bills, they barely have enough left to buy anything else, let alone to pay Wahida's 163 US dollars tuition fee. But she is determined to keep up her studies on her own and catches up with her former classmates once a week to learn about the progress they have made and receive study tips. The impact of the Taliban takeover on women has been unsurprisingly disproportionately large. Data shows women have lost jobs at a higher rate than men in recent months and some of the rights won during 20 years of Western-backed governments have been reversed. Wahida's mother laments her daughter's situation, although there are no official figures to show how many Afghans, men or women, have abandoned college due to the economic pressures, Wahida says 40% of her female classmates have dropped out of school due to financial difficulties.
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.